Okay, well, listen, uh, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this webinar event, which will last between 45 minutes to uh, up to a maximum of an hour. Uh, and thank you for spending the time to attend. Uh, and just to say that I am still working from home and I've taken every effort to reduce the noise and apologize in advance for any unexpected background interruptions from outside, like a dog barking or a passing heavy goods vehicle. As this is a live event, let's hope the connectivity remains stable throughout, shall we? Uh, my name is Mark Smith, and I'm delighted to be joined by my Novacom colleague, Loic Bettini, and our special guest today, the key members of the hostel team who have taken precious time out to help tell a very important story, uh, and a very big thank you to them. Uh, they are Virginie Ver Durand, the chief nurse and the clinical lead for IT and intensive care, uh, Stefan Kirsch, who is the Biomedical uh, Innovations Director and for the strategic division of this kind of project. And Alexandre Benoit, who's the Biomedical Engineer for the operational side of this project pre and during the COVID crisis. I will be your guide for the first part of this session, which will take no more than 10 minutes. This will include a brief summary of our company profile with details of the nature of our business and our customers across the world. Following that, I will help you understand why a solution like Patient Connect is so important in the current intensive care climate today, discussing the issues that clinical staff face right now in these unprecedented times, as well as touching on the wider organizational concerns. I will then hand, hand you over to Loic and the hospital team at Chalon, Chalon, who will take you through a project example where there needed to be a fast and creative way of deploying the software at the hospital, taking into account the severe restrictions of operating in a COVID-19 situation. Once Loic and the team have finished, I will return to ask a few questions to each of our guests that is relevant to their role in the hostel team. And there is also an opportunity for you to ask questions for them um, or us to just send a message on the chat function and we will answer at the end of this session. And then finally, I will summarize the main points of the session today, touching on COVID-19 again. And between us as your host, hope to answer the questions raised by you, uh, our Weber audience. The whole world is going through one of the most serious public health crises has ever known. The UK and, the Fr and France has not dodged a bullet either. Worst, they have seen, they've been one of the most affected nations by the pandemic. And all over the world, healthcare establishments have had to deal with an influx of patients never seen before. As the symptoms of the disease did not help, the resuscitation services of several establishments would have been full without a flawless and rapid reorganization of those services to create new beds in the intensive care units. This is the case at the Chalon Sursion Hospital, and I'm delighted to be joined by members of the team at the hospital who have very generously given their time to tell their story. This healthcare organization had to double the capacity of its intensive care unit from 16 to 32 beds. And you just can't do that simply by placing beds into bedrooms. During this webinar, you will discover how our biomedical interoperability solution was installed in record time by our teams by working closely with the nursing, IT, and biomedical teams of the Chalon Sion Hospital. You will discover how each monitoring device has been configured remotely in order to be compatible with our solution. You will also discover the numerous benefits of the nursing staff, whether in terms of time, efficiency or safety. For each new bed created, you will learn how the patient data managed to be transferred automatically into the electronic patient record while connecting new biomedical device equipment. This pandemic has severely disrupted the functioning of healthcare organizations and the supplier community has had to think creatively and quickly on how to maintain support for its clients without impacting the safety of everyone involved. You will learn how Inovacom worked in partnership with the hospital. So just um, let's begin with uh, an idea of just give you a sense of who we are and what we do to provide the comfort and the knowledge that we experts in the fields of interoperability. Anovacom was founded in 2002 and has 18 years experience as a software publisher providing best of breed interoperability data security access management and collaboration software dedicated 100% to the healthcare market. Our headquarters is based in Marseille and the south of France and we employ 180 people. In 2018, the company was acquired by Orange Business Services in recognition of our success 
that covers some 1,600 clients a day. In our country of origin, we have a 50% share of the market and we operate internationally with a strong customer presence in Canada, the UK, the DAX and Benelux regions with new customers in the Nordic regions, as well as many others dotted around the world supported by a growing number of software vendor partners. So introduction um, completed. Uh, I really wanted to just to um, uh, give you a sense of a uh, discussion I had with uh, my neighbor, Sarah, actually. Uh, so the next two slides has, has been produced after I was speaking to her, who is a senior nurse working in ITU, and, and talking to her helped me understand the issues she faces on a daily basis before and during the pandemic. So the first of these slides is representative of her issues before the pandemic. The first thing Sarah mentions to me is the sheer increase in the number of admin tasks and paperwork she's having to do. And she has to move around to different departments to get the paperwork as it hasn't followed the patient through the system yet. In addition, as there is a shortage of staff as recruitment is difficult, she's having to pick up more work, which is creating more stress. And she worries that mistakes are more likely to be made. And she says paperwork is regularly incomplete or missing. Then she talks about the technology that she and her team has to get to grips with using a variety of specialist applications that requires time for training, whilst all the time trying to spend more time with her patients. In addition, as there are gaps in her staffing needs, agency nurses are used, and they all need to be trained too. But these staff members are shared across departments. And then last but not least, Sarah's major worry is about manual transcription of her patient's vital signs, which needs to be taken regularly. You can imagine with an aging population, the lack of staff, and demand just rising all the time, in a normal situation, it's very easy to make an error that may have a detrimental effect on our patients. But then Sarah tells me about the terrible situation this pandemic, where demand is through the roof and urgent organizational changes were needed that allowed them to be both as efficient as possible, which included rerouting patients, both pre and post ITU stay, and then, of course, as safe as possible, how to keep her staff from harm. She told me it was extremely important to be able to quickly set up the equipment and that patient data availability needed to be immediate. Being able to communicate with her other colleagues, both upstream and downstream through the hospital to smooth out patient flow, she was realizing that every second would count. The team needed to ensure that they had as little interaction with equipment to avoid any unnecessary spread of the infection both in the unit and throughout the hospital. And finally, she said to me, because the surge of patients was so huge back in April and resources were limited due to self-isolating staff, they asked themselves, how much efficiency could they gain by automating the process? Now, this situation is repeated in every ITU department in the country and in fact, across the world. In a few minutes, you will listen to the chalon sur sion Hospital who realized they needed to reconfigure the unit and medical devices to help expand ITU capacity to meet the surge in demand of new COVID-19 patients. And they needed to do it very quickly and with as little interaction with those devices as possible to limit the spread of the disease. A recent predictive model suggests that 30% of people who are hospitalized with the virus will need ITU treatment. What is crucial is having real-time data at the point of care available to make a decision quickly regarding the patient's care. Is it time to move the patient off certain equipment? And have they recovered enough in order to treat the next patient waiting to be admitted? In fact, in the HSJ, it reported last month from an article written by the College, Royal College of Physicians that one fifth of medical staff are still currently on sick leave due to COVID-19. With one in four doctors self-isolating in the UK right now, when resources are this thin, it's imperative to turn to automating the process of capturing validating and exchanging information as quickly as possible. I think you'll agree the example of a COVID-19 patient's clinical support needs on the right hand side of this slide demonstrates very well the amount of tasks for just one patient's record of care, especially if this information is collected on paper and manually transcribed. In such a pressurized environment, mistakes are very likely. It also highlights the variety of data sources, the importance of timing of decisions, 
and the sharing of information to try and optimise the flow of patients through the hospital settings, either upstream and downstream. When we consider this example and multiply this to include other sick patients on top, then you really start to realise the massive impact our solution has for healthcare professionals in easing the burden of an already exhausted workforce. Sarah then explains to me that, you know, of course, ventilation is a key piece of equipment to use against COVID-19. But we need to think and need to be aware that it's not just about connecting the device is important. Some patients will react differently to others, and therefore the continuous monitoring of that patient condition may be crucial. Adding continuous surveillance to the ventilator workflow can aid clinicians with data that helps them to assess the possible onset of respiratory distress. In addition, this enables staff to be less exposed to risk of infection as their movements around the patient equipment are limited also. And finally, just sending the data somewhere isn't enough either. All the different data points need to be easily interpreted by clinicians. It has to appear exactly as the EPR needs to receive it. This data set could be large and come from a variety of sources of devices, and not all data will be sent to the same place in the EPR. So the story you're about to hear from Loic and the team at Shalon is compelling evidence of how a great partnership approach works, creating an innovative solution in a very urgent situation. So without further delay, let me hand over to, to Loic. Are you ready, Loic? I'm just going to, sorry, I'm just going to hand over the presentation to yeah, Loic. There we go. You should have it now, Loic. Yeah. Can you see my screen? I can. Yeah. It's all good. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, hello, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be here Muted. to talk about uh, Chalon sur Saône Hospital project uh, with you. Um, firstly, I will uh, give the floor to uh, Chalon sur Saône teams uh, to present uh, the hospital. Uh, then I will talk about uh, the project. And finally, uh, I will talk about uh, what we've done uh, during the COVID-19. So um, Alexandre, Stéphane and uh, Virginie, please uh, go ahead and present uh, the hospital. Alexandre? Hello everybody. Yes, oh, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> it's okay. Let's go. Yeah. Um, we want to just uh, presentation quickly presentation of uh, Charles Sorson uh, Hospital. Um, the Charles Sorson Hospital is a recent uh, building that will uh, celebrate uh, its 10 years of existence uh, next year. It has a great and large space uh, interesting for the healthy activity with uh, 750,000 uh, uh, square feet. It's a certain central site of the territory hospital community. It is characterized by a high take uh, investment. And just for Shannon Sosson Hospital, for example, the value of uh, biomedical devices per is uh, $21 million. The hospital uh, community is uh, composed uh, by uh, 1,600 uh, beds through uh, 10 structures, uh, was free hospitals with technical platform for surgery, emergency and critical care way and path, and seven structures uh, specialized in the head early. During the, um, the crisis and during the pandemic period, um, during uh, 16 uh, weeks uh, to March to, to May, uh, the Burgundy region has been uh, badly uh, affected uh, in posing uh, patient transfers. That's the next slide, uh, Loïc. Loïc, please. Okay, I, just, just... I will, yeah, no problem, um, Stefan. I will just uh, introduce uh, the project and then uh, we'll talk about uh, the COVID, okay? Okay. Okay, then thank you very much for the presentation. Okay, just going to the next slide. Okay, perfect. So now we'll talk about uh, <clears throat> the project. 
So um, Enova Compassion uh, Connect project goals were to uh, retrieve alarm and uh, vital signs data from medical device in resuscitation units, but uh, most of all uh, to identify the patients and the room where all the data comes from. After this uh, identification, uh, Enovacom had to set up and send alarms to an alarm supervisor and vitals data to the EPR. Uh, in this case today, uh, we work with uh, three partners. So ASCOM as uh, the alarm supervisor, uh, Clinisoft as uh, the EPR, and uh, Dragger as the medical device uh, manufacturer. Uh, the second objective of uh, this project was to allow uh, nursing staff on the ward and protect them, uh, closing patient uh, doors room with the aim of aligning with health and safety recommendation. As a consequence of creating a simple alarm uh, system outside of the ward, uh, the risk of spreading the effect infection between patients was significantly reduced. Uh, moreover, considering uh, that the patient medical uh, record is automatically fed with the uh, patient vitals data, uh, medical, medical staff uh, didn't have to frequently enter in the room uh, to recopy uh, vitals um, data in the EPR. So regarding the above point, uh, contacts between nursing staff, uh, equipment and patients are limited and that fit perfectly uh, with the recommendation that we have to follow during uh, COVID-19. So features of the, the project. So in this type of project, uh, we have to deal with several devices uh, and various manufacturers. So this is exactly where uh, Enova Compassion Connect is the perfect tool uh, to connect all type of device. In each room, we have to connect one monitor and respirator. So uh, the type was YAX uh, from the Dragger manufacturer. And uh, all, all the data from respirator were already sent to uh, the monitor. And uh, all monitor uh, were already linked to uh, a gateway, a Dragger gateway, a uh, name Dragger Infinity Gateway. So finally, Innova Compassion Connect uh, just was interfaced with uh, a Dragger gateway. Then we connected uh, one syringe pump with, uh, so it's Alaris from Curfusion and one Philip pump, uh, Flowcare from Curfusion in each room. So in addition to all this uh, equipment, uh, two more feeding pump available in all resuscitation units because sometimes patients need one, uh, one more uh, feeding pump in his room. And uh, at last and but uh, not least, uh, we had two other dialysis device uh, that can be used in every room. So this project uh, has been put in production in February uh, 14th, 2020. So really just one month before the beginning of the crisis all over the Europe. Uh, but I think uh, the, that you want to know it's really all the installation is, is working. So when a patient uh, arrives in the unit, the first important step uh, for the nursing staff is to link uh, by computer patient with the devices. So they can do it uh, either directly from the EPR with a little link that open a pop-up that you can see on the left uh, of, the, of the slide or directly on the EPC software. You can see on this uh, little pop-up that uh, there is a um, the patient identification, and then you can choose uh, the device that you want to connect. Uh, this step is really important because at this moment, uh, only medical staff uh, know who is the patient, where he is, and which device is uh, actually attached to, uh, to the patient. After this step, uh, the alarms from the device which have been linked are sent to the alarm supervisor. Uh, the alarm supervisor process all this alarm uh, to choose which one is important and which one is useless. I think at this point it's um, important uh, to keep in mind that this uh, filter rule uh, is a huge work uh, that has to be done by the medical staff. Afterwards, uh, significant alarms pop up on the big screen uh, present in ICU. 
uh, you can see this cream just on the top uh, right corner of the slide. And uh, this visual uh, display unit is split in a several window. And each window match with a room. Uh, and it's all medical can, the medical staff can quickly um, locate the source of the alarm. Uh, at last but not least about the alarms, a uh, nurse uh, carry a little device that kind of look like a, a phone uh, named Maiko that you can see just next to the, the, um, to the screen. So before starting to work, they pick up one of those Maiko and they assign to this Maiko several uh, rooms. It means that this little phone will ring when there is an alarm in the room which they have chosen. Thanks to this facility, they can easily identify the localization and the severity of the alarm. In the meantime, uh, so you can see the little screenshot um, just uh, behind. Uh, in the meantime, vital data from the device automatically fed the EPR every single minute. I want to say that firstly, uh, it's impossible for nursing staff to recopy data from device every minute in the EPR. So it's a real gain in full and complete traceability. And secondly, considering that nurses doesn't have to achieve this task anymore, this frees their time. Finally, the patients leave the units and it's really important that the medical staff detach, uh, so by computer, detach the device and the patient in Innova Compassion Connect. So this is all the solution is uh, and uh, during the COVID-19, they have to face some uh, serious uh, problems. So I will give the floor to uh, Chalon sur -Sun. So Alexandre, Stéphane and Virginie, uh, can you tell us what were the, the specific issues related to the COVID-19? Yes, uh, during the um, COVID crisis, during uh, 16 uh, weeks, March to May, uh, the Burgundy region has been uh, badly affected, uh, imposing uh, patient transfers, for example. And uh, during this uh, period, uh, we tested uh, 6,000 patients and uh, 550 patients were uh, infected uh, by the COVID and uh, 281 uh, health patients and uh, out, uh, out home home and, and a rehabilitation uh, of care. Um, in Nepali, uh, we deplore uh, 86 uh, dead, but uh, fortunately, um, we count um, only uh, 45 caregivers contaminated. Um, probably by the capacity to, to dispose uh, a continual uh, flow of data uh, out of the patient room and the reducing uh, exposure to uh, infection. And uh, what the question is, uh, the question is security thanks to uh, technology. So thank you very much. So, so as a result of uh, this, uh, those issues, we so we have to react quickly to help them to confront this crisis. So they called us uh, to connect 15 more uh, devices in the resuscitation unit. So as I said previously, um, it was uh, three devices in each room. Uh, the, the major problem uh, was regarding the dongles. Uh, they didn't have any dongle left to connect this uh, new device, so we have to send an urgent uh, package of dongle. Uh, then, considering, uh, considering biomedical and medical staff were already aware and well informed about the project, it was really quick uh, to connect this new medical uh, device. Uh, in fact, they know uh, the exact information that they have to retrieve from the medical device as uh, ID, uh, device uh, technical ID, uh, the IP address or uh, the localization of uh, those new uh, device. Uh, they know the solution, so the biomedical uh, services know the solution uh, Innova Compassion Connect very well and they master the configuration of the dongle. So their knowledge uh, allow us to rapidly set up our software. And uh, another thing that I want to say is that all the 
all the IT infrastructure, uh, that is to say, uh, all interoperability, network server, uh, etc., were already uh, there, already in place. So, all of these factors uh, help us to deploy 15 new medical devices in less than a week in the recitation uh, units. To go further, they uh, also requested to transform uh, a maternity child care unit uh, into an ICU from, for patients infected by the COVID-19. So we already retrieved alarms and vital data from five monitors localized in five rooms. Uh, as in the resuscitation unit, we just have to connect seven more monitors to handle uh, the, those new rooms. Uh, the system used for patient monitoring uh, was uh, also a drag one, but it's it's not the exact exact same type. And due to this assembly, it's impossible to plug the ventilator uh, on the monitor, so we have to connect directly to the to the ventilator. So we are actually wo working on this uh, connection, and it will be available very soon. As you. As you have seen previously, uh, this project is really important and uh, interesting uh, one. And uh, you can observe that it's extremely simple and rapid to add new device to your HIS when Innova Compassion Connect solution is already installed. Uh, so thank you, everybody. And now I'm going to defer to my colleague Mark, uh, who will uh, interview uh, the Chalon sur Sons crew. Unmuted, muted, unmuted. Hello, hello, guys. Can you hear me back again? Sorry, I, I put it on. Um, I was on mute, and then uh, I'm back again. So hopefully you can hear me. Can you hear me, Louis? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Okay. okay yeah. So as um, as as Loic mentioned, um, I'm just basically going to show myself as well. Hello, guys. Good to see you again. Um, just, I'd just like to ask some questions to you guys, um, uh, if I may. If I may start with um, Veronique, um, what are the pros and cons of the solution from a clinical point of view in, as, as far as you're concerned? Uh, hello, everybody. Look, first, the cons, uh, it change, it's a change in the work habits. Uh, admission to a shader is quite different with two connection phases. GE and EPC, but we win a lot of time for device equipment because medical devices are available in the room. The team can connect them easily by one handling. For discharge, the team must be rigorous and do not forget to disconnect medical devices when the patients leave the unit. Then, it is therefore important to understand the organization of the system in order to use it better. This requires a short training and to implement team procedure. Then the pro, the benefit is great for the team with com completeness of the data in the patient data management system. Overall alarm from all devices are centralized in distributing alarm system. This allows you to close the door of the rooms in complete security and reduce the risk of cross contamination. We create a secure environment for the medical team and for our patient. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Ronnie. That's, that's, that was really, really helpful. Uh, and now if I turn to you, Alexandre, um, yeah. amongst all the IT projects, why was this project prioritized? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, at the beginning of the project, it was a necessity to manage the problem of cross-contamination in our brand new ICU. Uh, the health authorities advocate to securely close the room door and maintain the room in negative pressure. At the beginning, the medical team's target was to externalize all the device alarm. Okay, it's different device. But ultimately, it was an opportunity to prepare for the future with an RRE implementation to be able to make information available for PDMS, alarm management, and tomorrow 
to archiving all the data and maybe to participate at clinical studies. Uh, this project is the first steps in the exploitation of the data to prepare the, the hospital to, of tomorrow. What's happening? Okay for you? Very good, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for that, um, Alexandre. Uh, and then also then on to Stefan. Um, what were the implications of the IT, biomedical and clinical teams in your establishment? Um, in first, I want to say this project is a collective adventure uh, that brings together multiple uh, skills. Uh, skills. Um, as in the management of the COVID crisis, uh, the victory is collective and the failure too. Um, technology uh, must be put at the service of the caregiver. It's very, very important. It uh, must facilitate and accompany the work of the care teams. If the tools is friendly, we can limit resistance to change. In this period, um, the project uh, team is uh, composed of uh, Univacom guys, of course, ICU doctors, ICU nurse, ICU nursing assistants for uh, the clinical expertise. The implication of caregivers team is essential um, to not lose the real nature of the field and the specificities of clinical activities, uh, to give a right answer of needs and not lose the goal and the objective because the technology has a large and great possibility. Biomedical technicians provide the technical expertise and integration into the hospital environment. This is the link between the clinical engineering and technological innovation engineering. The IT department was uh, in support only in this project. The Enovacom team has a um, leadership role, but also, and it's very important, a shared leadership role with the biomedical sector. The Enovacom team has a perfect knowledge of uh, architecture of a hospital's information system and understands the care environment, which facilitates dialogues with the different professionals. The Nevacom has considerability contributed to the success of this project and this analysis, organization, configuration, and the prediction. Okay, thank, thank, thank you for that. Um, and and now uh, back to you, Virginie, if I may. Um, for you, what, what what have been the impacts, minor and major, on your organisation in terms of reorganisation and reconfiguration of the department? Well, the COVID crisis has been stressful for healthcare teams with the anxiety of contaminating non-COVID type patients. For the medical team in ICU. This health crisis considerably increased the stress factor in the unit, which was already a stressful environment before the outbreak. It was necessary very quickly to increase our capacity of reception of patients and manage more and more ARDAs. Each of these patients represents a significant workload, and in fact, we could stay in the same room for several consecutive hours with the door closed. This is where the EPC project demonstrated its real value. Reporting alarm on micro device ensures that we can take care of our patients in an extremely safe manner, even if we were not so close to them. I want to say that before the EPC project, the ventilator alarm was only visible in the patient room, and we had to leave the door open to hear it. During the COVID crisis, it was not allowed to leave the door open because the virus was dispersed in the atmosphere of the world. For this patient, the respirator was the most important medical device in ARDS medical care. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's a great description of, um, of, uh, of the reasons why. So thank you for that. Um, and now, Alexandre, um, how was the relationship between the teams of Chalon, Sion, and Inovacom? Um, 
I want to say that um, with Innovacom, it's a partnership relationship. Uh, this collaboration begins in uh, ICU project and now continues in the cardiac unit, kangaroo unit, and NICU, and uh, tomorrow in the lab room, in operating room, all the hospital. Um, we want to generate for all the units. To reach this ambitious objective, it is necessary to co build the solution. I think it's not the Chalon Hospital project, but our project with Innovacom and um, all the, uh, the part, the furniture. Uh, with the Innovacom team, we share, I think it's very important, the same human values. Uh, Cobolding during test phase and implementation. Uh, confidence with uh, medical and technical team. Uh, respect of other partner, uh, Dragger and Fresenius and all the furniture. And to be frank, when it was necessary uh, and innovative all the time. I think Innovacom are very reactive during the crisis and I want to know right now and I want to say uh, that thank you for your support to transform our unit because uh, it was very effective, fast and with uh, all the day with smile and it's very important during the period. Okay. Thank you, Alexandre. That's um, that's very gracious of you to give us some um, to give some, some some credibility on your on your project, and I'm sure that um, uh, the the greater good of getting people well is is something that we all in healthcare want to uh, want to happen anyway. So so thank you for that. Um, so turning back to you then, Stefan, uh, what were your fears before implementation, and, and and how did you overcome them? A lot of fears. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> no um, we we had concern about uh, our IT architectural complexity and the difficulty of integrating a new active element. Uh, we were reassured uh, by the strong adaptability of Enovacom Passion Connect. Really. And to connect all the equipment, uh, we laid uh, RG45 sockets in the room, and we could uh, either have a new plugs installed, and if not, we installed uh, another switch. We uh, uncovered difficulties to access the different communication protocols by the uh, device uh, manufacturers. Uh, for example, for uh, dialysis uh, devices with uh, machines uh, uh, that uh, did not uh, transmit alarms. And uh, in this spirit, uh, we are uh, accelerating uh, the renewal of devices that do not uh, communicate with machines that will have to. And this uh, criterion now of choice in the purchase of the new equipment, ready. Some devices uh, did not have communication port. It's a reality. For example, the nutrition uh, pumps. We have created a partnership uh, with uh, companies and developed uh, solutions with the installation of uh, Lantronix box, for example. Perhaps we can imagine in the future uh, a single standard design uh, format for communication as radiology, for example, department with the DICOM protocol. And uh, currently, different companies work about a uh, standardized uh, protocol for the biomedical monitoring system. And it's very, very important. It's a, a good way for us because it's more simple for the future to collect uh, different devices in the ICU uh, room. It's OK. OK, thank you. Thank you for that. And um, I've got one last question for um, Virginie. Um, uh, and that is, how does EPC contribute to improving the safety of your healthcare workers, Virginie? Alors, the solutions allow to close the door and limiting the risk of, of contamination. 
or the device data were collected automatically in PDMS without human intervention. Then this free up carrying time and mental load. The micro device has an alarm button if you were in difficulty, or the nurse in the unit are called and come to help us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, you can see me again now. <laughs> I'm just doing all the technology at the same time. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> okay, so Alexander, how long did it take to implement the solution to respond in this uh, emergency situation? You, you did touch on you did, t did touch on that earlier, but uh, if you can just give us an, a sense of how long did it take, um, you know, from the point of knowing about um, you had a problem. Um, and then I think you need to explain what kangaroo wards are, because I remember saying it yesterday. So I'm not sure that everyone knows what a kangaroo um, situation was. <laughs> okay. Uh, first, <laughs> uh, the description of kangaroo is a, a special unit for moms and, uh, and, and baby. is to preserve the link between the moms and the baby. And if the baby needs to be uh, hospitalized, uh, I can give a room where the mom is uh, hospitalized to and to preserve this link. It's only after a lab room and uh, you, we transform this unit to be able to, um, um, to, to uh, have more patients in a intensive care. I'm clear? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, and the first question is, um, how long did it take? Um, the health alert arrived on 16 of March, and uh, we started the installation in ICU during this week. Uh, we have device installation, monitor, ventilator, perfusion pump, and IT solution. Uh, finally, we were ready in ICU the following week. It was more difficult to find devices than connecting them. For the biomedical engineer, the APC solution made it possible to prepare resuscitation room with connected equipment in record time. Uh, uh, the health um, authorities had set us a target of um, 40 serious patients to be treated. It was a challenge for our hospital to multiply our capacity uh, by 2.5. Uh, our goal was to make the work environment as easy as possible to focus only on the patient and safety procedure. I think the extension of the solution made the situation more comfortable for the caregiver. The forecasts were very worrying and the crisis cell decided to transform our care environment and uh, recovery room has been transformed in ICU. We have no COVID patients. Cardiology intensive care has been transformed into a middle level care area. And I it's very important to say that the goal was to avoid overloading ICU with COVID patient we didn't require require intubation. This point is very important because at the beginning of the crisis, the recommendation by the Chinese and Italian medical team suggested rapid intubation and advised against non-invasive ventilation. Medical teams wanted to limit the risk of aerosolization. Finally, the recommendation changed to ultimately preserve the spontaneous ventilation of patients and avoid intubation with generating more morbidity and mortality. And it's very important to create the middle level care unit fastly to respond to this change of uh, take of care. Uh, uh, take of care. I'm clear. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay. And um, and then the last question. Um, thank you, guys. So your English is fantastic, by the way. It's better than my French. <laughs> is how does this project, Stefan, fit into your value-based care program? It's very, it's very simple, uh, really. Um, for legal reasons, uh, 
is it imperative to access all the data production? And particularly uh, with, with uh, biomedical data. Um, also, to improve practices, uh, uh, is it essential to be able to create a database with uh, a caregiver teams and to change about uh, practices? Um, so that tomorrow we can participate uh, in scientific uh, studies. In, it's, uh, it's, uh, for example, in ICU uh, about the um, activity with uh, different uh, devices, uh, the usability of uh, devices. Is it essential to uh, prepare uh, the archiving of data in a virtual natural uh, archiving system to, uh, in a second step, to uh, share the data with different tool uh, in the hospital? And also, I just want to, to say to finish, uh, as well as uh, provide, proving, uh, sorry, instant uh, access to data, medical device uh, integration uh, help it reduce the risk of infection. It's very important by removing the need of for the physical uh, contact, really. Okay, great. Guys, that's, that's been fantastic. Um, thank you very much for all those questions and I hope that everyone on the, um, uh, on the call uh, has got some value out of that. Um, we have do have one question now too from the audience actually um, and that is a question about um, Inovacom or ASCOM. So I think it's just, uh, Loic, if you just want to just uh, provide us with the relationship between the Inovacom Patient Connect uh, and ASCOM, I think there is a query about whether um, uh, w w whether alerts going into, uh, can you just explain that again? Yeah, yeah, no, no worries. I can, uh, I can answer to this uh, question. Up, oh, yeah, I'm here again. Um, yeah, so actually, Enovacom handled the part of the connection with the device. So we retrieve uh, uh, vital so data and alarms from the device, and uh, then we send it to Ascom. And Ascom will handle the work of uh, a filter rule, as I say. And uh, handle uh, the micro and the, the screen display. So we are here just to retrieve alarms and uh, and data from the device, and then uh, ASCOM. Uh, we just send it to ASCOM, and ASCOM will process it to be uh, you know simple for the for the medical stuff. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Louis. Okay, so um, so thank you guys. I'm just going to now just finalize uh, with a few just the main points again, um, and then to touch on the COVID-19 situation. Um, so everyone that's attended, um, you should now know that Novacom understands the need of healthcare clients very well, uh, and is a market leader in the field of interoperability. The issues for clinicians, even before the virus outbreak is bad enough, with a reduced workforce, higher demands for services due to this growing aging population, the difficulty of gaining access to data in real time and lack of clinical resources. But in the COVID-19 pandemic, as you've just heard, the situation where technology adoption um, has been and will continue to be crucial in supporting better efficiency initiatives, keeping staff members safe and ensuring that more real time data is available for clinicians to make better informed decisions about the care of the patient. Remembering that ventilation isn't enough, the scrutiny of the data, making sure it's easily interpreted by clinicians and relying on the information for possible deterioration of the patient, but also to ensure staff interactions and movement in the department are minimized to reduce the spread of infection. So um, I guess this really just, just uh, completes our webinar. Thank you very much guys for, for listening. Um, please get in contact with us if you need any further information. And again, a very big thank you to Loic and to the all the, the team, the hospital team at um, at, at the Chalon sur Sion. Thank you, guys, and uh, and goodbye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.